Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and today I've got the March of the Machine pre-release primer for you. I'm going to open up one of these pre-release packs and talk to you about how to build a deck and a bit about what you can expect at a pre-release. So let's get on started. Now, to go to a pre-release, you'll want to go check out your um, <coughs> the store locator to find a store near you. And uh, try and go there and pre-register if possible. Give them a call, talk to them, see if you can get on the list in advance. Uh, so as you crack this open, ooh, look at this. Every world, every hero, one last stand. That's so cool. You open this box up, there's a bunch of counters around here. So if you want to punch these out for gameplay, you totally can. Get that little peekaboo Elspeth in there, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and then you have this guy right here. So you're going to crack this open, and you're going to get a bunch of things inside. First thing you're going to get is the spin down D20. Here's what it looks like. And this keeps track of your life total. It goes from 20 down to, well, 1. But if you're lower than 1, i got bad news for you. You're probably dead. Uh, then you get a bunch of cool stuff inside. You get a little divider to, to, you know, to hold your deck in your sideboard. That's cool. Uh, you get this little guy right here. On the front side, you get just this cool piece of artwork showing off the battle across all the different planes. And on the back side, a bit of information about how to build a pre-release deck. This is not unlike what you'll find in my pre-release primer article. So you want to build about uh, two colors. Usually your deck is two colors. You can play more than that, but I'd say sticking to two is a pretty good idea. You want 40 cards, and you want yeah, 15 to 18 creatures. 15 is fine if if that's where you end up, don't worry about it too much. And, uh, you know, good removal spells or things like that in your five to eight other spells. And among your creatures, you're going to want to have ones that can break through. Uh, let's hear abilities like Flying, Trample, Menace, and so on. But there are all kinds of other ones. And you want to create a mana curve. Where you can kind of have stuff to play at every turn of the game. Especially uh, your creatures. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. And then you're going to play 17 lands. So the core of it is you want 23 cards that you're going to play with. You're going to grab 17 lands. And uh, keep in mind, at a pre-release, you can ask people for help. It's an event that's great for learning. Okay, so we've uh, got a couple things here. The first thing you'll find is our pre-release card, which cool, it's Ozolith, the Shattered Spire. It's got this little pre-release stamp in the bottom left-hand corner, indicating it's from the pre-release here. So that's kind of cool. A bunch of stuff you get in here. You get an Arena Code card with some goodies on it. Uh, you get this Ozolith, which you can play in your deck. And then you get another card, and this one cannot go in your deck. Okay, this is a special promo just for this pre-release. There's three different ones you can get. We've got Katilda and Lear here, too, in this cool showcase frame. But there's uh, Katilda and Lear, um, Goro Goro and Satoru, and Squee and Slimefoot. So uh, you'll get one of those three. You cannot put them in your deck. There's a cool little take-home thing you have. This Ozolith, though, you can put in your deck, okay? I made a whole video about this. Uh, you can go watch as well. Uh, so you, I'll put this aside. You can play with, with this Ozolith, though. And then the core of the experience is going to be these six packs right here. Now, in the past, I have um, just kind of talked about the basis of the pre-release deck, or maybe shown the very end of it, but a lot of people really liked, uh, commented, they liked really seeing me go through the whole process, so that's exactly what we're going to do today. I'm going to clean all this up right here and kind of just crack open my packs and talk a little bit about what I'm doing as I do. I'm going to leave out this Ozolith, though, just in case, just in case we want it. Um, so the first thing that I'm just going to mention, I mention this every time because people have their minds blown, is I always crack all my packs right away. And the reason I do that is I know it's tempting to look through them all and see what all the rares are. But um, <clears throat> uh, for your store, it's a lot easier if you create all the trash right away so that um, so that they uh, they can pick it up right away. So that's just a little, little helpful tip for you. And it just makes things run a little smoother in your store. So we're going to crack all these packs. Then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to kind of sort them out by color and figure out which colors are the most appealing. So let's go sorting by color. So what I always do, and you know, different people have different opinions about how to, how to tackle this, but I always sort um, by uh, going through and grabbing all the ones of a single color first. Well, sometimes they take out the tokens and lands as I'm doing it, but it just helps me. Well, well, that's a... Uh, all right, that caught my eye. <laughs> that's a showcase boring Clex. Ooh, that's pretty darn exciting. That is a nice open. Yeah, it's okay. Get stopped by your rares as you're doing this, you know. Nothing, uh, nothing wrong with that. No shame, no shame. Um, wow, and the showcase Luris. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to build this deck. This is gonna, gonna be awesome. This is off the uh, Legend bonus sheet, which of course exists in the set, um, the Multiverse Legends. I talked about that in a previous video. It's really exciting, getting all these guys. Whoa, oh, uh, I'm getting a little stopped here, but this foil SRAM looks so cool in that Kaladesh frame. What a fun blast from the past. And the showcase Nimizit, this pack is banging. Look at this. We've got Heliod, Niv-Mizzet, Showcase Frame, and Saram all in the same pack. Holy smokes, what a pack right there. This sealed deck is going to be bananas. I don't even know, even know if, if it's going to work yet, but I'm already excited. Ooh, two Sarams. 
one good stram deserves another. You know. Okay, so I got all, all my white cards out. Um, and anyway, I like uh, just going through and grabbing them all by color. You can do whatever method is, is best for you. Um, I just like just like doing it this way. So uh, when you go to your local pre-release, the pre-releases are really low stakes events. You're really just there to see the newest cards and have fun. So don't worry about it too much. You can be brand new to the game, and that is a okay at a pre-release. Um, it's a really welcoming place. And uh, they're some of my favorite Magic events of the year because everyone is kind of playing with the cards for the first time. So you know you get uh, you get to experience it with your fellow fellow uh, Magic players. You get to talk about it and share cards and show you know show what strategies have been working well for you. And yeah, I, I absolutely absolutely love a pre-release. And this set is pretty wild too with new card type battle, this multiverse legend sheet, kind of the big climactic bat you know battle here. Uh, there's a battle right there. Big climactic battle of um, this huge inter interplanar war. This the Saram should have gone the way. I, I was just so excited about them. I skipped right past them, huh? Someone in the comments is going to be like, "What? Why did you go past them so quickly?" Um, wow, that Voron Collect is really exciting. Now, one thing I try to do is not get too honed in on my rares. Obviously, seeing an exciting rare is really exciting, and quite often it is correct to play your exciting rares. But it's important to keep in mind that you should not get too distracted by your rares because the core of your deck is always going to be your commons and uncommons. Um, you know, if your deck is, it has one awesome rare, but the rest of the commons and uncommons are really bad, usually that's not going to be good enough to pull it, uh, to pull it into being what you want to play. Um, just because you're, you're going to draw a lot more of the commons and uncommons than you're going to draw of anything else. And then here we've got a bunch of multicolored cards. So I'm going to set these up here, and we can figure out what to do with these later as we kind of narrow in on colors. Heliod to, wow. Um, Troxa and Konaros. Nimizet Reborn, probably not a card that's going to see play in our deck, but anything is possible, I suppose. I'm just going to take all these tokens of land and set them aside. We don't need them. Put these guys right here. Okay, so I've sorted everything. Now what I start doing is I go through by color, and just kind of see which colors look the strongest to me, and I try and pull out the cards that I think are really going to be the strongest in that color combination, or sorry, in that specific color. Um, and uh, that can help put me in a direction. So white, I know I was excited about already. We've got Heliod right here. Four mana, four, four, that gets back uh, an enchantment from your graveyard, and then transforms into uh, into this. So it's pretty, pretty nice. Two Srams, which, you know... Its ability might not trigger a lot, but even if 2-mana 2-2 two two that draws you a card, it's still pretty good. Inspired Charge, not that thrilling. Progenitor Exarch, pretty good. Rare, lets you incubate a bunch of times and flip them over easily. Oh, removal Spell, right here. You're always looking for the good removal spells. You can put on a creature artifact and take it out of commission. Um, this guy's okay. The Access is a cool one. Okay, so it looks like we, 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 we get this is a good 2-2 two -two flyer. White looks decent. I mean, we've got Heliod, which is really exciting. We've got this Progenitor Exarch, which I think is, is pretty good. Um, we've got a good removal spell. It's not... I re after seeing those first few cards, I was really hoping it would be deeper than it was. It wasn't that deep, um, but it's still something you could totally consider playing. And for SRAM, it's worth noting in white, we've got one card that'll trigger it here. We've got one equipment you could play here that'll maybe trigger it. So yeah, it doesn't have a ton of, of targets or a ton of uh, triggers, but it might still be good enough. Let's take a look at our blue. So we've got, this is pretty good as a 2-mana two 2-1 two flyer that transforms into, into this guy. Um, and keep in mind, you can play these guys, and you often will play them off-color. You can activate these by 2 life, which is pretty easy to get to. Um, Strobe Knight's pretty good as a 3-mana 2-2 two two flyer that makes more knights. you got a, this Bounce Vault Surveils is pretty good. This Pretty Champion is quite good. Eh, that's just okay. Okay, yeah, 3-mana 2-2 two two flyers. Here's one of these battles right here. Taps and stuns one of their creatures, and then if you get it, it turns into this, these rooftop, rooftop saboteurs. Blue's not too bad either. Another Xerx Strobe Knight. That's nice. This guy's good too. There's all fear and shape craft. That it cantrips. It's really nice. Yeah, this looks good. This card, I think, is, by the way, pretty under, underrated. Eyes of Taxis. It reminds me a lot of... Um, what's the the green Fortel card in uh, Amonkhet? It's not that dissimilar from the pack, whatever that card was called. Um... It looks a lot better than than uh, you might think. Or it plays a lot better than it might look to you, rather. Okay, so so not bad. Blue's got okay. Nothing nothing too wild there. Let's take a look at our black. This guy's okay. Swamp Cycling, it's, you know, it's a fine ability. You can, it lets you hit your land drops early, but card's nothing to write home about. This card's okay. 
Yeah, these are like three mana two two flyers that can do some alright stuff. Here's a good removal spell. This card's a decent removal spell. Black is not looking super hot. Got this Invasion of Eldraine, which is once again pretty medium. Okay, black is not looking so good for us here. I'm pretty I'm leaning against playing black. Let's see what we got in red. Okay, this Rampaging Raptor is excellent. 4 mana, 4-4, four, four, Trample Haste is a great stat line on its own, and then it also pumps up and can uh, damage your battles too, so that's a really nice one. Um, this is a really good against white or blue decks. I, don't, I often don't mind main decking these cards, because this card is, you know, one mana for one damage isn't great, but it is still alive sometimes, and a lot of the time your opponent will be at least one of these two colors, so you can deal five. Um, so these these might not look like like they'll make your deck, but they actually should make your deck a decent chunk of the time. Searing Barb is decent. Um, deal two damage, incubates one. Okay, red's got good removal. This volcan Volcanic Spite is great. Red's got some decent removal right here for sure. It's got, what, uh, two, uh, two Searing Barbs, a Volcanic Spite... It's got this Rampaging Raptor. It's not the deepest color. There isn't the most of it, but there's a lot of what is there is pretty good. This Ozolith is incredibly strong. So this is a, a really strong rare. Let's you basically tap two mana to put two counters on artifact or creature you control. Um, thanks to the it's the combination of the first and second ability, letting your stuff grow out of hand, and then also it can synergize with even more stuff in your deck. So it's pretty solid. Um, so that's a really good rare to have around. Uh, let's see what else we got. Yeah, there is this Vorinclex. This guy is bananas. Five mana, six six trample reach. You get two force out of your hand right or out of your deck into your hand right away. Then for eight mana, it becomes this powerful thing. You get two creatures from your top ten cards. You get seven counters. Let them fight things. So yeah, it's kind of pretty bomb. Pretty bomby. That plus Ozolith has me pretty excited. Invasion Muraganda right here. It's a five mana fight spell. So definitely like what I'm seeing here in green. I think you've got two pretty good cards right here, plus a fight spell. It, it's not the, not the deepest color, but a lot there that's enticing. And now let's take a look at our gold card, see what comes out of me. Invasion of Moag is really nice. Green white is a plus one, plus one counters deck, and this card fits into it if you're that strategy, but also if you're not. It's just it's really good. Nimizit Reborn, I mean, awesome card. Really unlikely to make our deck. Crokso and Kuneros is quite good. I mean, 6 mana, 6-6 six, six Vigilance, Manus Lifelink is already pretty attractive on its own and limited. Um, but getting the three colors could be kind of tricky. So I wouldn't expect that to happen. Invasion of Kylum is good if you're playing it. Luris is, of course, excellent. Very hard to companion in this uh, in this format in that and limited. But just 3 mana, 3-2 three, Lifelink with this ability is quite strong. This cards are good, especially if you're backing up. Obviously, you got two of those. Rada is a cool card to come back here. This is if green and blue, this card is decent. Here's this Invasion of Tolvada, which in white black is like a zombified that then turns into this uh, cool creature. And then Dina has a reprint in black green. Okay, well, I'm really liking what I'm seeing green. I think my black, I'm just going to take off the table. My black was not deep enough to be interesting to me, so I'm just going to eliminate. Usually I find that eliminating colors is the kind of easier way to go about it. I am curious, is there one color that has a bunch of auras that I could um, play with that SRAM or is there equipment? Because those two SRAMs with enough ores and equipment could be pretty awesome. Not really seen a lot here, though. Nah, there's not really not really a lot going on there. Bummer. That would be so fun to play the double SRAM deck with all that. But kind of everything. I do have one vehicle hiding over here in this flywheel racer, which is a fine card. Um, I think, man, this Luris is really strong. I kind of tempted to try green-white and play, like, Luris, Invasion of Moag... Also imagine white red with the double mirror shield hoplites and this invasion of Kylum. They're all there are these three mana fixing lands too, although I don't know that we're gonna end up using any of them. And these a lot of these cards are pretty pretty decent. I mean there's only a few things that super grab your eye, but Here, you know, like I said, evasion is always super crucial, and man in blue, check out, like, this evasion package of flyers. You've got a bunch of these Xerix Strobe Knights. You've got two Xerix Strobe Knights. You've got two Preening Champions, which are all excellent in the Skyclave area list as a two-mana, two-one flyer. And I really like this Eyes of, um, Eyes of Gotaxias. It's, I think it's a lot better than it looks. Um, right, Incubate 3, like, five mana for a 3-3 three, three and draw a card. Doesn't sound that awesome, but then you're like, oh, it's Kavu Climber, which is a fine card to play. So. 
Hmm. Tough decisions. And then, wh what would you do? What, what do you all think out there right now? All right. Well, I think what we're gonna go with, just because it looks the most fun. Is I want. I do want to play green. I got Vorinclex and Ozolith. The rest of my creatures are decent enough. And uh, this is a case where I'm using the bombs as kind of my tiebreaker here. I think we can make these cards work work for us, do a lot of really good work for us. And then usually I use my gold cards to try and figure out if there's, you know, if, if I'm close. And green white really is speaking to me here, right? I get both these Invasion of Moag and Lurus of the Dream Den if I go green white. Um, you know, you can make an argument for for some other color combinations, like green red gets you Rada. Green blue gets this mutagen connoisseur, but I think let's try um, let's try green white. Let's see how that goes. And you know, if this was a full pre-release, I would spend more time locking it all in and figuring it all out. But here, for the purposes of this, let's just uh, let's let's lock in and start building our deck. Normally, if I'm building a sealed deck, I will try building it a bunch of different ways. But uh, here, let's just let's give this a try. So, taking all these guys out of here. Took all the these lands out over to the side, taking all these creatures out over to the side. Yeah, you could consider a splash potentially depending on, on your deck, but um, you know, like I, you could potentially like splash in red if you wanted to off of this rugged highlands. It's half on half on color. But let's just try and build a nice two color deck here. And I think I'm probably not going to end up playing these guys, so I'm going to put them over to the side. So what I'm going to start by doing is lay all my creatures out in mana curve order. And when I say creatures, what I really mean is cards I'm going to play on the turn I have that much mana for. Um, so you'll notice that, for example, the creatures, um, this guy's foil, so it's kind of glaring in the camera here, my apologies. But the um, this isn't a creature, this is the Ozolith, the Shattered Spire. But it does cost two mana, and I will play it on the second turn if I have two mana. So it goes down here. Where spells that I, I'm not going to play on that turn, like Arachnoid Adaptation, I would put down here in my bottom row. Also, as I'm going through this, I'm going to just take out any cards that I think aren't great fits for the deck necessarily. So um, normally Crystal Care Base is a card I would cut pretty early, but with the double SRAM gets me potentially interested in this, so I'm going to keep it out here and consider it. Um... These, these are more of maybes. This Invasion of Muraganda, though, I think I will probably end up playing. Serpent Blade of Silent. And keep in mind, you can always back up. So th these creatures with backup, this new backup mechanic, they can target themselves. Um, so this is a 3-mana three 3-2 three, death touch. It can also spread it around, which is really nice. I may end up not playing it, um, but it's a card I, I'll certainly consider. Um, this gives you a run pest. This is sort of like 3-mana two, 2 get a land, which is always really nice. Here's our double Ceram. Here's our Realm Breaker's Grasp. Here's Heliod. Going to want to play all those. Four mana, four, four is a pretty good rate. So I think that this Regenerate Exarch, I'm probably going to cast on three mana the most uh, coming in. I could also imagine casting on five, so it kind of jumps between these three, three and fives. Um, but I could see, see casting on either. Inspire Charge, I think, is unlikely to make this deck, so I'm going to just leave Inspire Charge off to the side. This Alabaster Insect Fire. Inspire Charge I like the most if you're really going wide and you're really aggressive. But I think our deck is not doing that. This core halberd is a is, is a, actually pretty good. Um, doesn't make every deck, but with double SRAM, it's definitely going to be in the running here. Um, that SRAM just really, really exciting stuff. Uh, mana two two. This card's a two mana two two that can turn into this three three. It's okay. I don't know if we're gonna have enough counters to make it awesome. We've got invasion of Moag. A little bit of backup. I'll put it down. I'll consider it. But the card's probably going to get cut. This is 5 mana. Gain 5 life. Incubate 5. So really it's 7 mana before you get to your creature. So I'm not so hot on this Tangled Skyline. I'm going to pull that off the side here. Um, Seed of Hope. Gets you a permanent back. You mill 2 cards. It's okay. It cycles for a land. I think we're probably not going to play it. I'll put it back in the stack. This is Double Strike, which is really good. If you have a lot of ways to pump it up. We've got one way here. We've got Ozolith. We could consider it. I don't know if it's going to make the cut. This is 5 mana, 3, 4 flyer at base with backup. You can back up something else to jump it for a turn. I, you can consider playing that card. Um, this is essentially 5 mana for a 4-4 four, four Vigilance, uh, except either there are other Phyrexians running around, and you can spread it out across two turns, so maybe, probably not, but maybe. Um, this guy's pretty decent, though. You think this includes targeting their stuff, so if you you know fight or Realm Breaker's Grasp or something, this will trigger. This is a good combat trick. This is a decent card, but the white-white does make it a little tricky to cast. Um, this card's 
okay. You can play it, and then on turn four, you can spend four and have a four three ready to ready to attack. It's okay. It's not my favorite. I like the Sky Warden. That card's nice. And then this card I think is actually better than it looks because it just blows up so many things. Artifact battle enchantment a creature with flying for two mana hits so much stuff. Um, and then I think we're probably not gonna not gonna play these. This Vengeance Earth is like kind of interesting as a combat trick. Um, I kill off their stuff maybe because they're that seed of hope. I'm not gonna make the cut. So we're looking for twenty three playable. So we lay out all the cards. So you've got my uh, spells down here. It's debatable if Invasion of Moog should go up here, or go down here. Um, this should go up here because I'll play it on turn one a lot of the time. I'm gonna leave it down here though because I don't know that I'm always gonna play this on the fourth turn. I'm sorry for the glare on these cards. I apologize. Uh, let's count how many we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 2, 23, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so this tells me we've got to cut six cards to get down, down to 23. So things I'm going to start looking at are where do I have too much stuff, um, and then uh, kind of cut from there. So looking at my deck, I've got a lot in the 2 and 3 drop, drop slot, a lot in this early slot here. Of course, in the 2 and 3 drop slot, you know, green-white deck are going to be more aggressive, so you want to have a, a curve like that, but you know, we can probably do to, to cut it down a little bit. Um, so I think we can probably at least look at cutting at least one of these three drops. It's not going to be Luris. It's not going to be this three mana two two flyer that helps um, transform you incubator tokens. It's not going to be this progenitor exarch. It's not going to be this overgrown pest. So I think these are the cards that are potentially on the chopping block here. I think that this one three double striker is not going to be quite good enough. I don't have enough ways to pump it up. I think to make it uh, to make it hit. So we're going to get rid of Billy Rider. The Serpent Blade is salient. 3 mana, 3 2 Death Touch is not a card I'm stoked about. Putting the counter elsewhere, I don't really have any combos with it, so I think this can, can potentially go. And then Phyrexian Awakening, could could see keeping this. How many other Phyrexians are in my deck? Because it gives all of them. It's 1, 2, when this transforms as a Phyrexian, 3, 4, although the Converter Beast having Vigilance is not really doing a lot for me. Uh, 5, well, that's also not doing a lot for me. The Incubate tokens have it. I guess that the, um, the Vigilance on it is pretty relevant. Okay, I think I'm into keeping the Phyrexian Awakening here for now. On two mana, I like Ozolith. I think I do want to play both these Srams. I've got one, two, one, two, three ways to draw off of it. Not the most. I should probably consider bringing that vehicle back. Just so I can draw off, off of Sram. And it's a, it's a decent two drop. can help accelerate you a little bit, you know, get you up to your fours. I just think, think that, you know, if Sram can draw you one card, you're already doing great. If it draws you two cards, you're in really good business. And you just don't have to, you know, you can just leave it around on the table and not trade it off. So I think we're going to play this Alabaster Host Sanctifier. Daxos is just a little hard to get into play sometimes, but he's probably okay. And then I think the Sun Blessed Guardian is going to be the cut right there. And I think we're also probably going to cut this Dune Shaper. So let's see how our card count looks now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 23. So we're three cards over where we want to be. We're a little light on removal, but I think I will cut this Vengeant Earth, even though it's an okay trick for leveling your creature up to a 4 4 and potentially hitting a land to kill off one of their creatures. I don't think that's quite what this deck wants to be doing, so I'm going to cut that. This Crystal Carapace is definitely weak, but I think with the two SRAMs, I do want to keep it around in this deck. Normally, I would I would very much cut that card, though. Um, I think we want this combat trick right here. Maybe it is the Phyrexian Awakening that goes. It's always so tough when you get down to the last, last couple cuts, you know? How many triggers do I have for this Tiller of Flesh? So it has to be a spell that targets. So these battle, this battle, even though it targets when it comes into play... It's not a spell targeting. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's going to be enough to make this guy worth it. If you can incubate even one time off him, that's pretty good, I think. It might be this Atraxas Fall or this Angelic Intervention that goes. I'm going to cut this Intervention. It's a decent combat trick, but I think that this Arachnoid Adaptation is going to be enough of a trick. And I wanted most of you playing the board here. So we're going to cut that. And... Is there one of these four drops? Like this Converter Beast is okay. It makes a 5-5. Five, five. You have to pay two mana for next turn. But you get a 0-1 out of it. Hmm. I have to 
cut what one more card? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. You have to cut only one more card here. I don't know. What do you all think you would cut? So I'll tell you what I'm thinking right now, which is that Atraxas Fall is on the weak side for sure. It's only good in certain decks. A lot of decks do have battles lying around or, or things to hit with this. But I think we're low enough on removal that I do want to keep it. So th the other two cards I would consider cutting are this Phyrexian Awakening and this Converter Beast. And I think I want this Converter Beast around. Just, you know, it's it doesn't block right away. The 5-5 five, five make doesn't block right away, but it does let you transform and start attacking it. It's really good if you if you curve the Attentive Sky Ward into the Converter Beast. So I think I want this. Which means that I guess Phyrexian Awakening is the card that to go. The other option is maybe this Golden Scale Aeronaut. It's a little pricey. 5 mana, 2, 3 flyer. Maybe that's the cut. Maybe it's this Aeronaut. I could go either way on here. I, I guess I'll value the cheaper card here a little bit. This is also you can play at 5 mana if you want. So I'll cut the Aeronaut. Our deck's pretty low to the ground. Pretty low curve. Pretty low curve here. And this Crystal Carapace is certainly the weakest card in my deck. But it's with the two SRAMs. I just I think it's worth playing. Um, and uh, you can definitely get some people with this card. Just putting it on your flyer and going to town. And if you can't trip off SRAM, all the better. So anyway, that, that, that's one example of how I build this deck. Now, of course, now that I've built this version, the green-white version, I'm looking at it like, well, I could imagine swapping the green out. I mean, this Vorinclex is really good, don't get me wrong. This, this uh, gold card is awesome. Ozolith is really good. But maybe I'm like, well, I kind of want to go into red and get all that removal. And that's part of the fun of the deck building process. At a pre-release, you're going to have tons of time, so make a roll at it, and don't be afraid to take the time to build the deck you want to build. But that's what I got for you today. Quick little primer on how to build a pre-release deck. And note that I've got a good curve here with two drops, three drops, four drops, and one five drop. Normally I think you'd have another five drop or two, but so that's played in all turns of the game. This can also be played on turn five pretty effectively. But anyway, that's an example of how to build your sealed deck, and hopefully you found it useful. I'll talk with you again soon. And until next time, may you have a fun time getting ready for the pre-release. You got this.